Hey friends, this morning we will be listening to a historical fiction called Heart Mountain. Now, I want you to listen carefully and pay attention especially to the characters as I read the story. I will read it once all the way through, and then I will read it again, pausing for think alouds. Here we go. Heart Mountain. I barely remember Palo Alto, where my parents and I lived until 1942. That was before we were ordered to meet at a church across the city. We piled onto a bus with a crowd of other Japanese Americans, armed guards watching us the whole time. I do remember the guards made me scared and my stomach flopped over every time the bus went over a bump. By the time we got to Wyoming, there were a lot of bumps on the roads. My mother says I cried nearly the whole day until I saw the mountain looming above the horizon. My parents tried to make it sound like we were going on a vacation. But once we entered the compound surrounded by barbed wire, I realized that something was not normal. My father stared ahead as we carried in our small bags. My mother would not lift her head as she walked. Rose, this will all work out. I'm sure it's not for long, my father said. My mother still would not lift her head. That winter, we all found it hard to lift our heads. The snow never ended and it blew sideways. It's true that the first time that I saw, it's true that the first time I saw snow, it was amazing. My father told me, See, May, snowflakes are beautiful, and no two are the same. He showed me his hand, blue with cold, covered in little white stars. But after a day or two of shivering in our barracks, no one wanted to look at a snowflake ever again. Just as the snow clumped together, we all clumped together. The camp was so crowded. At every meal, people muttered, sorry, sorry, forgetting their elbows in each other's plates. When springtime came, I could see the farmers through the barbed wire fence plowing, plowing huge fields. The tractors were so far away that they looked like toys. How vast freedom was and how small I felt behind the fence under guard. I will never forget the day we finally left Hart Mountain in 1945. When we pulled out of the compound, I watched the barracks slowly get smaller and smaller in the bus window. But the mountain never seemed to get smaller. My father still talked as if we were going home after a long vacation. I know now he was trying to help us feel better. It was all he could do. Sometimes when I wake up in the hill, when I wake up the hill to our apartment in San Francisco, I think of that mountain. We never climbed it, but we lived in its shadow. Every weekend, my father brings me flowers, brings flowers into the apartment, a burst of color. It makes my mother lift her head and smile but you can still see the dark shadow of Heart Mountain in her eyes. All right, now I'm going to read that story one more time as I pause for Think Aloud so you can hear what I'm thinking about as I read this historical fiction story. I barely remember Palo Alto, where my, par where my parents and I lived until 1942. That was before we were ordered to meet at a church across the city. We piled onto a bus with a crowd of other Japanese Americans, armed guards watching us the whole time. I do remember the guards made me scared, and my stomach flopped over every time the bus went over a bump. By the time we got to Wyoming, there was a lot there were a lot of bumps on the roads. My mother says I cried nearly the whole day until I saw the mountain looming over the horizon. My parents tried to make it sound like we were going on a vacation, but once we entered the compound surrounded by barbed wire, I realized that something was not normal. My father stared ahead as we carried our bags. My mother would not lift her head as she walked. Rose, this will all work out. I'm sure it's not for long, my father said. My mother still would not lift her head. That winter, we all found it hard to lift our heads. The snow never ended and it blew sideways. It was true that the first time I saw snow, it was amazing. My father told me, See, May, snowflakes are beautiful, and no two are the same. He showed me his hand, blue with cold, covered in little white stars. But after a day or two of shivering in our barracks, no one wanted to look at a snowflake ever again. Here's my think aloud. So I noticed that the narrator says her family and other Japanese Americans have to leave their city and were put on a bus to Heart Mountain in Wyoming. 
I know that Heart Mountain is actually a real place where Japanese Americans were forced into internment camps. Historical fiction is set in real places and related to real events. It also reveals how characters feel about these events. The author shows how the camps affected Japanese Americans who were forced to leave their homes during World War II and were imprisoned in the camps because of their ethnicity. It was not a kind thing to do at all. Here we go. Just as the snow clumped together, we all clumped together. The camp was so crowded. At every meal, people muttered, sorry, sorry, forgetting their elbows and others' plates. When spring came, I could see the I could see farmers through the barbed wire fence plowing, plowing huge fields. The tractors were so far away that they looked like toys. How vast freedom was and how small I felt behind the fence under guard. I will never forget the day we finally left Hart Mountain in 1945. When we, when we pulled out of the compound, I watched the barracks slowly get smaller and smaller in the bus window. But the mountain never seemed to get smaller. My father still talked as if we were going home after a long vacation. I know now he was trying to help us feel better. It was all that he could do. Sometimes when I wake up to the hill in our apartment in San Francisco, I think of that mountain. We never climbed it, but we lived in its shadow. Every weekend, my father brings flowers into the apartment, a burst of color. It makes my mother lift her head and smile. But you can still see the dark shadow of Heart Mountain in her eyes. Here's my think aloud. So I noticed that the narrator says that the camp was very crowded. The internment camps were overcrowded, and the winters were extremely cold. I also see that May's mother is still is still affected by her time in the internment camp. This tells me that people who were imprisoned in these camps still felt the effects of this terrible experience even years later. Historical fiction helps readers learn about real historic events by describing the feelings of characters who go through these events. So think about how the narrator and the main character May feels about, about this being in this internment camp. She was really young, but you kind of learn a little bit about her parents' feelings about the internment camp, and it seems like to me that this was a really, really hard time for them to go through in these internment camps. It makes me feel really sad, and it it makes me wonder how they ever managed to get through that and how the the father managed to try to make it as best as possible for his daughter. All right, my friends, that is all for our reading today. You have um, some activities for our genre and vocabulary, so good luck with those, and have a great rest of your day.